you guys ready? All right. So I have a one-year-old. He's very cute. His name's JD. I know. He's so cute. Um, he's very busy. Like, he's literally, like, going, like, all day long. He's playing. He's um, getting into everything, pulling out all the things. You know, we've been trying to pack our house up this week, and he's just, like, undoing everything we're doing. But he's very busy. He's very much on the go. He's a very active little boy. But my favorite moments with him are first thing in the morning when he wakes up, I get him out of his bed and we sit on the couch and he'll just snuggle with me and he'll just sit and he'll just be with me and I'll tell him that I love him and I'll tell him that I'm so thankful that he's my boy and you know we just have this nice moment. He'll give me kisses. It's, it's really sweet. And on Friday, this last Friday, I was in chapel and I was in worship and I noticed my brain was going everywhere. I was like thinking about all the things I had to do. I was distracted, you know, I was stressed out about this or, you know, just all these things were going through my head. And I felt Jesus come to me and he was like, hey, can we just be together? Can we just shelf this and just be together? And I realized in that moment that I was very much like in my life on my own. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just like, okay, how am I going to do this? I, I, I need to figure this out. And it was very much me just kind of doing my life. And, and he was like, hey, let me into this. And I feel like sometimes it can be easy to kind of get caught up in just like doing our life on our own or like, okay, I know what I can do. I know how I can fix this. And sometimes we accidentally forget to let Jesus into it. And he was telling me that just like I love to just be with my little boy and when he just sits and is with me. Jesus likes to be with us in that way. And he likes to be let in on, like, the stuff going on in our brain, too. But, like, even, like, in that moment, we, like, I, I let him into that. But then it wasn't even about that. It was about us just being together. And I feel like if, so tonight, if you can relate and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm feeling distracted or I'm really stressed out about something or I've got a lot to do, and you can feel yourself tonight just, like, kind of going there, I want you to pause right now and just decide that you're going to connect with Jesus and you're going to let him connect with you and you're going to feel his peace and we're just going to be with him tonight, okay? So I do want you to do that for a minute. Just close your eyes and picture Jesus. He is right here with you. And I want you to very quickly take a moment and just tell him about whatever is on your mind, whatever is distracting you. But then I want you to let him just in. Let him talk to you. Let him bring you peace. Let him just hold you. Yeah, thank you, Jesus, that you're here. We choose to keep our eyes on you, to focus on what you have for us tonight, to speak to our hearts. Yeah, and then just, just you can open your eyes now, but just keep that, keep that with, like, stay connected with him, okay? He's, he's here, and he wants to be connected, and he wants to speak to us. All right, so we're going to start in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then, you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. 
there's a lot in that, right? So first he's talking about bearing good fruit, and if you don't bear good fruit, you get cut off and thrown into the fire. And then he goes over to, many will say to me, didn't we do these things? And he says, I never knew you. And I've always, like, I've read both of those verses a bunch of times, and I'm sure you guys have too, but I've never really thought of them together. I've always thought of it as the verses about, you know, branches and bearing good fruit, and then there's those verses about those people that, you know, uh, said, didn't we do these things? And he says, I didn't know you. But the other day when I was reading it, I realized it was all the same conversation that all was happening, like that was all in one spot, right? And it got me thinking, like, if I was to say, oh, you know, I cast out demons and I heal the sick, you'd be like, that's awesome. That is so cool, right? Like, that's cool. But Jesus is saying, yeah, but I didn't know those people. And I realized that when it comes to the fruit in our lives, I think sometimes we think about it as like those actions, like casting out demons and healing the sick. But he's saying, no, I didn't know you. And the fruit of our life has to come from a place of knowing him. It's not just the outward actions, but it's, it's knowing him and having him in our lives and doing our life with him. Yeah, so having a relationship with him is very important, right? And I think what happens sometimes is like it's very obvious when we didn't know Jesus, and then we do know Jesus, right? It's like black and white, like I, I was a sinner and now I know Jesus, right? And um, I think sometimes what we really got to be on guard for is the part where we know Jesus that we have to continue getting to know him and continue getting to know him and keep going after that. Because the truth is we could spend our entire lives getting to know Jesus and still not know everything there is to know about Jesus. Like there's always more. And I really feel like we need to be on guard with getting complacent with that. Because when we get complacent with that, we start to do things out of our own strength and out of our own power. And then the enemy has like a little door to get in and just start, you know, planting little seeds for not so great fruit. We're going to read another verse. Uh, It's a classic. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. This one's pretty classic. If you've been in church for any amount of time, you've probably heard this verse. I even grew up like in Sunday school, and I remember they made me memorize it. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So as I was reading this, it hit me again. So when we, when we have the fruit of the Spirit, so when the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and we're living our life for Jesus, this is the fruit that comes out. And if you look at that list, can you put it up again? It's a lot of heart stuff, and it's a lot of character stuff. It's not just the actions of the fruit. It's, it's what's inside of us. He really cares about what's inside of us. Are we living in love and joy? Do we have patience and goodness and self-control and all of these things? And it's really good to just look at that and be like, okay, where am I at with these? Are these things manifesting in my life like they're supposed to be? Because that's really the litmus test for how the fruit in our life is. It's not so much the actions because the actions should come from this place. So I want you to look at this list and ask the Holy Spirit, Which of these things am I doing good at? And let him show you some that you're doing a good job with. And then after that, ask him if there's one maybe we should work on. We have to remain in Jesus because when we do that, these things do naturally come out. They do naturally flow from us. The good fruit naturally flows and the bad fruit will naturally go down, right? Have you guys ever bought like fruit from the store, like, you know, a bag of oranges and you look and you're like, oh, one of these is rotten. And then the next day you go to get an orange and you're like, oh no, three of these are rotten now. And it's because that one bad orange was in there. Or have you gone to the store, found a bad orange, taken it out, and then the rest of the fruit didn't get rotten. Do you know what I'm talking about? And it's the same with our lives. Like, if we have any fruit in our life that isn't good, it eventually spreads to the other areas of our life. And we have to be very on guard for this. And I do think that the enemy can be really sneaky, and he can kind of, like, 
slowly kind of just trickle some of this stuff in and we almost forget to be on guard for it if we're not on guard for it. Um, and a few things came to mind and I'm gonna kind of go over them, but it's not just these things. So if anything else comes to mind while I'm speaking, you know, feel free to allow the Holy Spirit to show you whatever he wants to. But um, something that we really need to be on guard for is offense. The enemy loves to just sprinkle offense in there. And we don't even really think about it sometimes because maybe the person that offended us was actually wrong and maybe they shouldn't have done that. But like, what's our heart after that? Because if we choose to walk in offense, then we are going to eventually keep people over here and we're not gonna let people very close. And the truth is God created us to be close to people. He created us to do um, our Christianity with people and to do our life with people. And so if we're choosing to just, you know what, this offense isn't that big of a deal. I'm just going to keep these people here. And they offended me. And if I let them close, they'll probably hurt me or whatever. But if we stay in that place, eventually we're an island of our own. And none of us were made to be an island of our own. And an island of your own doesn't produce good fruit. And the truth is, if you're separating from people, you're also separating from God. Because God created us to be with people. It's just the way he made it. So we need to have people in our life. And if you find that you're somebody that walks in offense, let's deal with that, <laughs> you know, because we don't want to live our life like that. It makes us miserable. The next one that came to mind was uh, unforgiveness, which kind of goes hand in hand, right? And, like, I've kind of been thinking about this topic a lot lately. Um, I think when we talk about forgiveness, and it is a topic we talk about a lot because it's vital in Christianity, forgiveness, and to be forgiven and to forgive. You know, Jesus says, forgive and you shall be forgiven. Don't forgive and you won't be forgiven. It's a big deal. Um, and I think, though, like when we talk about this topic, we, we tend to think about the big things, the big offenses, the big pain in our life, the, the things that, like, defined us, you know, or the, the time we were abandoned. And I, I think, like, we really got to be on guard for the little things that we're not forgiving because any unforgiveness doesn't produce good fruit in our life. I was talking to someone a while ago, and they had something happen where they were like, you know, they got really hurt, and you know, it was a while ago by now, though, and they were like, yeah, I forgave, but this pain is going to last me at least two more years. I was like, what? Like, if you have that attitude, then yeah, it will last you two more years. Like, and so I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you have forgiven. Maybe go back to the Lord on that one because that doesn't sound like forgiveness because that's not, like, God didn't create us to just be in pain for two more years, you know? Like, that's not how he created it to be, and that doesn't produce anything good. When we choose to walk in unforgiveness, we're, we're literally, like, in this, like, prison cell where it's like mentally we're stuck emotionally we're stuck and we're just like it's very hard to like move forward with that and so you know I think it's the like you know the offense and the unforgiveness go hand in hand if you're offended you usually aren't forgiving and so it's just really important that we check our heart with that and like how are we responding to people what are we doing when someone hurts our feelings what is our response when like somebody just treats us unfairly the next one I thought of is pride and honestly, what pride is, is insecurity. If somebody's, you know, puffing themselves up and, and, you know, trying to prove that they're the best, really they're insecure because true confidence comes from a place of humility. Confidence doesn't come from pride. It looks confident on the outside, but if you look closely, it's usually the person just like trying to prove who they are, right? And there's a lot of verses in the Bible that say that God doesn't like pride. And, um, yeah, so if you, if you notice that you struggle with insecurity and, uh, you know, then it's, it's worth dealing with, right? Because it causes us to feel like we have to promote ourselves. Our words. This one's tough. If you want to know what's going on in your heart, take a little, uh, recall what you've said the last 24 hours. Was it positive? Was it negative? Did you gossip? Did you have a bad attitude? Did you spread it? It's, uh, yeah, the, what's going on in our heart definitely comes out with our words. So if you're curious what's going on in your heart, think about what you've been talking about. You know, and sometimes we use the excuse, that was my safe person, I told them. But like, you gotta look at your heart, right? <laughs> you do, you gotta look at your heart. What, why am I saying this? What's my intention with this? And then the last thing on my list is fear. 
And this one hits me because it's, it's, we live in a world that is just so focused on fear. And so, um, like, it just tells us that we have to be afraid and we have to be worried. And if we're not, we're being irresponsible or, oh, gosh, I need to be worried about my kids or I need to, you know, all this stuff. And it's like, it's very easy to get caught up in that. But the truth is, if we are living in fear, we are not trusting Jesus because you can't do both. You can't live in fear and trust Jesus. It doesn't work like that. And if you're not trusting Jesus, that's not going to produce very good fruit in our lives. And so we really have to watch out for that one. And that's one that I'm constantly getting convicted of because I'll catch myself worrying or, or like, you know, oh, I need to figure this out. And it's like, yeah, but I need to trust Jesus. Um, and then maybe you thought of more as I was talking, but those are just the ones that came to mind for me tonight. But I don't want this to be something where it's like, oh, no, I, I relate to some of that stuff on that list. Darn it. I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be, oh, I relate to some of that on that list. I need to go to Jesus. I need to connect with him. I need to do this with him because that is the answer. We can't get out of this stuff on our own. We need Jesus. And so I want you to close your eyes. And if the piano player could come up. So a lot of times this stuff comes in if we have unhealed pain or um, offenses or unforgiveness or things like that. And I just really feel like Jesus wants us to meet us there tonight. And he wants to bring healing. And I also just want you to be willing to allow him to show you what's going on. Sometimes it can be hard to <laughs> let him show us because it's like it's kind of vulnerable. And sometimes it's not very cute. I remember one time I was uh, just in a neg. I, I had a week where I was just being negative, and like he pointed it out to me. And I remember my instinct was, I don't want to think about that. I'm not being negative. What are you talking about? And it was like I had this choice: like, okay, am I going to look at this and look at what's not so cute in my life, or am I going to just avoid it and let this moment pass? And I want us to go after him and allow him to speak to us. And allow him to show us what he wants to show us. And maybe he'll show you something that I didn't even talk about tonight. And that's okay. I have one more verse I'm going to read with your eyes closed. This is Jesus talking. He's talking to his disciples, but he's also talking to us. It's John 15. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up, and they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Lord Jesus, would you just show us if there's anything in our hearts that we need to look at? If there's any areas where any type of seed of bad fruit has been sprinkled, Jesus, would you show us? We don't want that. And Jesus, if any of us have grown complacent or um, not gone after you as hard as we should be, Jesus, would you forgive us? We're sorry. Jesus, thank you that you're so kind and you're so faithful and you're willing to meet us here. Thank you that you're so patient with us. Yeah, so Holy Spirit, would you just show us whatever you want to show us? And if he's showing you something, don't let this moment pass. 
do business with him. There's going to be a ministry team up here. You guys can come up. Jesus, thank you for loving us. We love you so much. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being kind. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus, do whatever you want to do tonight. We love you. Amen. Thank you for watching the Father's House Oroville YouTube channel, but don't stop there. Please subscribe to our channel and help us spread the message of Jesus to all your friends and family by sharing our videos. You can also help support us financially by clicking the Give button. Thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you again soon.